Hello, and welcome back to A Swift Look, a Taylor Swift show. I'm Zoe Jewell. Let's get into today's show. So for today's episode, I'm going to be going through the five burning questions I have about the Tortured Poets Department. It is an album that is coming out very, very soon, less than a month away. And though we've gotten a little bit of information about the album, we know the track list, we know the featured artists, Taylor always has a few things up her sleeve. There's always a lot we don't know prior to an album coming out. And so I'm going to be going through the five biggest questions I have about this album, the stuff that is keeping me up at night and honestly making me literally count down the days until this album comes out. Okay, let's get into it. Starting off with my very first question, the thing that is, I don't know, it's it's making, I shouldn't be spiraling about this because it doesn't, it's, I, I have full trust, but I'm just so curious. And the question is, what previous album will the Tortured Poets Department sound most like? I think this is something that a lot of Swifties were asking especially when the album was first announced. Is this going to be like an ever more folklore vibe? Is it going to be more like Midnight? Are we going to go back to more of the Speak Now Red era? Will it be a pure pop album like 1989? Will it be more hard hitting and darker like Reputation? Like the beauty of Taylor Swift is she's an artist. If you look over the course of her catalog that she's done so many different types of music. I mean, yes, obviously genre wise going from country to pop, but she also has these like different pockets in between, like more like rock country or like or pop rock. And then she kind of got into like almost even a little bit like electronic might be too strong of a word, but she kind of did with reputation. You have the lover or the folklore evermore, almost like folky singer songwriter, really stripped back. She can, she can really do it all. And so I think a lot of us were like, where is this going to go? How is this going to fit into the catalog? I feel like we we also, I think, got a little bit of information that this album might be more pop rock. So with that in mind, I'm thinking this could be like a Red era album, which Red's my favorite album. So if that's true, I will be overjoyed. Um, But I'm kind of thinking it's going to be like Red 1989 style of music. But I'm I'm so, I'm so curious to find out. And maybe it will be, it's a total like a, a completely new thing. It, it won't be like previous albums before. Um, but I, I am curious to know, like, kind of, is this going to be a new era of Taylor Swift in terms of her genre? Or is she going to be reverting back to previous albums and music that she made before? We'll see. Okay, second question. Will there be any songs on the album that reference to or are about Travis Kelsey. Now, obviously, Taylor Swift has made it known over the course of her career that even though she does write about personal experiences and relationships, and we can all infer who certain songs are about, she herself has never admitted any songs are about anybody over the course of her career. And I don't think she's going to change that up going forward. I think we do, I think it's safe to say that this is going to be a breakup album. It's going to focus on the breakup that she had with Joe Alwyn. But I am curious because again, she started dating Travis in August of last year. Will we get any hints? Will there be any mentions of references to Travis Kelsey on this album? I think when I I broke down the track listing in a previous video, which you can go watch, and I mentioned that there were a couple song titles that could potentially be about Travis Kelsey, I think particularly the song Down Bad, that seems like it could maybe be a Travis Kelsey type of song. Um, But I'm really curious. I'm really curious. I wouldn't be shocked either way. I think if this is just a Joe Alwyn album, breakup album, wouldn't shock me. But I also wouldn't shock me if we got like one or two songs that we're sort of looking forward to this new relationship and this new era of Taylor Swift. Okay. Number three, will there be any hidden songs that she releases that we don't know about, a la the Midnight's 3 a.m. version? For those who, I mean, I don't know how you could have missed it, but when Taylor Swift dropped Midnight's or released Midnight's, she then also released um, like an additional extra, I'm not even sure how many songs are on that 3 a.m. edition, like eight or nine extra songs that we didn't know about. It was almost like a double album in a lot of ways. And I know that she has announced 
extra bonus tracks for the different versions of the album. But I'm curious if we're going to get like a B-side or some other chunk of songs that she hasn't announced yet. I feel like Taylor always has this stuff up her sleeve. And I also feel like she's in a period of her life where she is really inspired to write a lot. And we know that Taylor is not, especially now, she is not shy or she's not concerned about just like putting out music. If she has songs that she likes, she's going to put them out. And so I could sit there being a chance that she just like kept writing following the completion of the Tortured Poets de- department and will want to give or will we'll want to put those songs out now rather than wait another whatever two or two. I mean, we don't know when she put out a second album or another album, but like it could be a while before her next album. Um, and so I can see there being a, a case where she wants to put out more music. We'll have to wait and see. Okay. Question four, will Florence and the Machine actually sing on the song Florida with, I believe, three cap three ex- exclamation points. Um, this is sort of a running joke. I don't know if it's a joke. It's talked about in the Taylor Swift community that whenever she has a female feature on her song, aside, honestly, the only exception to this was Colby Calais, I guess, in um, on the song Breathe from the Fearless Era, but also Phoebe Bridgers um, saying like she actually had a verse. Other than that, when Taylor has a female feature you can barely hear them sing on the song. And I'm talking about her song with Lana Del Rey. I mean, she literally made another version of Snow on the Beach so people could actually hear Lana's voice. You know, the the chicks are on a song, barely. Marin Morris, same thing. Heim. Like, it's sort of kind of interesting how she has these people on her songs and then you don't really... They're just almost like backing vocals. They're they're not actually, it's not like a duet or anything like that. So I'm curious with a vocalist like Florence in the Machine, I don't know how you don't have her have a full verse and like actually hear her sing on the song, but giving Taylor's track record with all of this, I'm just curious to find out and see what ends up happening. Um, And this is not a shot at Taylor. Love Taylor. Obviously we have a full channel (laughs) that's dedicated to her, but it's an interesting pattern. And I hope that Florence has a big part in this song. All right. And finally, the final question, number five, where will So Long London rank in the track five list that we all have in our heads? We all know that track five is a very meaningful spot in the Taylor Swift um, lineup when it comes to her songs on an album. I just did a video yesterday ranking my favorite track five songs from least favorite to favorite. And I am so curious to find out where this song will land in my own personal ranking. I have high hopes, I have to say, because as I mentioned, not to spoil my previous video, but my favorite track five songs, All Too Well and Dear John, are the ones where she is really going through something and she is working through some serious pain. And I have to imagine that the song title definitely seems like it's going to be an emotional one, but also she went through a really intense breakup after being with somebody for six years. I I have to imagine that's going to bring up a lot of really intense feelings. And so I think this, I'm just going to say it now. I think this will be in the, in, in my top, top three favorite track fives of all time, which I might come to regret that saying that, but I kind of feel like that's where we're heading, but I'm very curious to find out. So there you have it. Those are my five burning questions about the tortured poets department. We have less than a month to go. As I mentioned before, we're going to have so much great content on this channel going into the release of the album and then beyond. There's just so much Taylor news happening right now that like we're going to be chock full of content over here. Please make sure that you subscribe to our channel. Let us know in the comments your burning questions about the album. What are you most looking forward to? And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.